plus two, taking into account some of their massive plays like Monacy having huge performances. But one consistent factor has remained for Ents. Spinks has been an absolute beast. Absolutely. Spinks has been phenomenal thus far, especially on Ancient. Although it was a bit of a back and forth affair there, ending in OT. Spinks definitely the shining light for Ents as G2 starting on the T side over here. They're not going to be making any ruse of the fact that it's going to be a hit coming in towards B. A nice crossfire being set up between Hades and his teammate in the form of Spinks. But Hades finds nothing in Spinks now. His position has been compromised. You know exactly where he is as Diha, his teammates, come in to help him out. But they all fall like 10 pins. As Snappy, the IGL left in a 1v5 and there's nothing he can do. G2. A quick blitzkrieg of around to the B bomb site, and ends. They had they had members there, they had players there, but they were not able to find almost a single kill. No real kills forthcoming, and G2, as you said, just blitzed over the site. They got the kills, they get the round, and now Ents backs against the wall have got to come in and dip in for a force buy. Two MP9s, Scout, couple Desert Eagles thrown in the mix, and G2 off to the races with two of their own MAC-10s, already getting aggressive up through middle, but Hades could be there to greet them in the underpass area. If they're not careful about this one, Hades can spray him down so quickly. Flash will proceed to peak, though. The Flash actually hit the deep more so than Hades, but he still comes out second best. Oh, just getting saved there by Jax with his teammate as Monacy finds Madden as well. That could have gone really all right for the side of G2. The nade, though, from Diha, great follow-up. They knew Monacy got dinked down. Now Snappy and Jax. Intense standoff here, but Jack's patience will pay off. He knows Snappy's position means that there's no one probably nearby towards that B bomb site. Diha shot with the scout. As you see Jack's just jumping around, jump, uh, jumping Jack on the B bomb site, clearing out all the close angles, and that's going to allow the avenue for G2 to make the way in towards the B bomb site. Still paranoid of the potential of a flank coming in. They know Diha was towards mid, but they still have no eyes on Spinks on a deagle of his. But with Jack's pushed in this deep, hold up, Diha decapitates Jack's, and all of a sudden, bombs not planted, mind you, Vince. Diha has a couple more seconds until that smoke clears. And then maybe, maybe called into action. His teammate dies ahead of him, though. And it's Nico, that man that they discussed on the desk, needed to have a big performance, is one of the best Mirage players when he is feeling it. And if there's more in store from where that came from, things could get difficult for Ents very quickly here. Off to a 2-0 start. Ents will be into an eco, of course. And G2. This effectively is a bonus round. And they have the MP9 in the hands of Hunter, who can go out there and try and spray down and cash in a couple of checks in the process. The upgraded pistol for Ents as G2. I think a great point Maui raised earlier in the desk was how you said, like, you, you, you look at, I think it's Pimp who mentioned it, if you look at the individuals on the side of G2, you're talking about Nico, Hunter, and Monacy, of course, and, like, you look at his team on a map like Mirage, which, you know, gives itself to a lot of duels, potential on some of these uh, some of the parts of the map and the fact that they aren't as solid as they should be in this map is such a big surprise right but then on the flip side you have Ents who okay Ooh. Madden that was pristine Alexi B will however trade they still know where Madden is and Madden for the time being has been abandoned by his teammates flames are going to force him back and Jax he lies in wait he knows the players are on the pass and Madden he continues to tear them apart two clean shots with a deagle and all of a sudden around that G2 should win. It's looking a little, a little dicey right now. A stoppy tag down at 6 HP, but still alive. That grenade will finish him off. But could be baiting them into a false sense of security because Madden is there and is now creeping his way up. There's one. They were thinking about boosting, but have second guessed themselves. Now go back in. And it's disjointed, but they get away with it. Nico's brute force. Allows them safe passage towards the site, especially as Hades has lost his head. It was a tentative round, Blair, as you said. It should have been a formality. It should have been a foregone conclusion. Maybe falling into place now, but Spinks, the man of the hour, the consistent heavy hitter on Ents is alive and on the prowl. Looking for some weapons to pick up. It's only an MP9. I think he has every reason to maybe give this a shot. If he can connect to one dig, then this round is doable. 
Not sure as to where these last two players reside. And now having picked up a Galil, makes more sense to just hold on to this one. Upgrade with the rest of your teammates and come back stronger into the next round. Still hefty damage inflicted. Should be mentioned one of these weapons was an SMG, so they didn't lose full rifles, but they did lose two. And that's pretty, consist uh, pretty considerable considering the situation that they were in. Absolutely. If you look at the money right now, right, you have Jackson $150. Hunter, of course, will have enough money to buy for himself. Alexi B will be able to drop towards Jack. And actually, never mind, Spinks takes on Nico as well. So yeah, hefty economic damage being dealt out here, meaning that one of these guns will be dropped in the direction of Jack. So there we go. Alexi B will drop the AK-47. And AWP should be purchased here by Alexi for Monacy. As we have G2... The first real test here against the buy of Ents. Up in the hands of Hades. One for A1 to so each and every one of them, and uh, we'll see the early smokes being deployed. G2, great start thus far, despite losing a number of players. And we see a lot of utility being deployed towards mid, and it's of course going to be Hunter and Jax trying to force Ents to maybe try and contest mid, but it is just a ruse. It's a walk up towards B bombs that only play one player, lies in wait, and it is going to come down to Snappy to shut this one down. Snappy in the smoke, using it as a sanctuary. Hoping it's his ally. Good for one, but no more. Nico has put an end to this B-side. And it looks like Spink's gonna try his damnedest to get re-control over this area. Instead, though, he walks into a barrage from Jax, and Hades will be off to save G2 with a quick-fire 4-0 lead. It's, it's incredible how Hunter is just being sent towards mid to try and sell the fake, try and keep the uh, the focus of Ents on him, and it just gets away with two kills. Barely takes any damage. And in the meantime, Snappy, unfortunately, caught a little bit out of position as well. A great round from G2 there. Ents falling for the ruse, thinking it was going to be battle for mid instead. G2, they immediately pounce onto the B-bomb side with Snappy, the IGL, buys lonesome. G2 make it 4-0, and oh, and look, I think there are a lot of valid criticisms of G2 on the T side, especially in Mirage. Like, I go back to the RMR, and I remember when they played against Anonimo, their opening matchup, it was on this very map. It was on this very map that they got taken down on in OT by the by the under, by massive underdogs there in the form of Anonimo, and uh, it was on the T side where they really, really struggled. But right now, I know it's still very early days, Vince. I know a couple of those rounds have been against the Pistols uh, for Rens, but... It looked pretty solid. At least for Ents, they're going to be able to eke out yet another buy. Try and play around the AWP in the hands of Hades. It's once more a bit of presence towards mid. This time it's going to be Monacy. They've opted not to go for the AWP. The AK-47 in his hands. We, of course, have uh, Nico as well slowly holding towards Palace, making sure that Ents don't get up to any shenanigans. Remaining members, though, just taking this passively. Now we'll play it towards underpass Hunter. And Jax making sure that Snappy doesn't push in too deep. Snappy has deployed a smoke inside of Apartment, so you could try and use that to push it a little bit deeper into apps, get a little bit of map control, so we can allocate more resources towards mid or towards the A bomb site. Instead, he just opts to spot from the van position. So G2, after a few pretty fast and furious rounds, they slow things down. I love that. Seeing if Ents maybe get desperate, try and snatch something out across the map, try and push something aggressively, and in doing so, Effectively spring their trap. Deha, there's the aggression I was talking about, and Alexei is up to the task. They're making it so uncomfortable, but the timing from Sphinx's push could not have been sweeter. And he collects with two. Hades holds the line with the AWP. The bait and switch out as well. They have the MP9 up close in the hands of Snappy. And now he's gonna show his hand. Much better from Ents. Closing this round down, and Nico can do little but hope to pick off some stragglers. Does have control over the bomb, but nowhere near enough time to do anything with it. And could come head to head with Madden. If he can take Madden's head off, there could be a golden ticket towards the A side of the map. I think he just about has enough time. It's a whether he can get across there in safety or not, as there is an AWP peering him down in the form of Hades, and there he is. Collects. I thought the Molotov may play hell with Hades' position. It was a nice effort, but Ents have themselves around. If he gets a bomb down, I start to believe. I start to believe, because it is Nico, but <laughs> Ents, exactly. yeah, it, they, bit of a lifeline here. Spinks, G2, not expecting his position. A little bit more heavier defense towards that B site. 
shutting it down. And yeah, sure, G2, they took things a little slow, wait for Ents to make any mistakes, but Ents, they just held on through. No, Hades now. Will's mid, assisted by a couple of flashes from his teammates. He's standing the flames, though, because that is going to whittle down to 26 points of health. That's a lot of damage being taken by Hades. And Spinks hoping to catch someone off guard, but Hunter will find him. And once more, it's going to be the B hit, but this time there are three defenders lying in wait. Oh, they're pulling the plug. They've expended a lot of utility from the CTs. There's still tons of time left, and they have Hunter in middle. They know they're not getting flanked from that side at least. Whether they've been pushed from Ramp or Palace is yet to be determined from the side of G2. But they're backing away. They're keeping their options open. They know they have to pick on Spinks, and thus the CTs have to spread themselves up that little bit more thin. And, and this really, uh, th this is a point Maui made on the desk initially as well. Alexi B is one of his problems on the T side is the fact that he doesn't use the entire clock. He doesn't give enough time for his teammates to do work. Because if he's talking about late game, late round, the best people you have on the team are players like Nico and Hunter, who have that clutch potential. So I lighted some G2 to slow things down, though. And even though it's a 4v4, look at the amount of damage being dealt on Diha. He has no clock. Maybe an inkling where Alexi B is, but look at the health on Madden and Hades. They are just walking around hemorrhaging. Limping on the side. A trail of blood behind them. And the hounds are out on the side of G2. They are hungry. Starved in the last round of victory. Looking to pounce now. Nico posted up just outside Palace. 20 seconds. Trying his damnedest to clutch out in the previous round, but may not be required. Monacy goes in for the first pick in his engagement. They're going for the plant. They'll successfully get it down. Now the spray from D-Hack can only muster the strength for one. And although Hades is low, he's keeping them busy. Manages to just dance around the flames and keep himself alive. But Alexi is here to chunk down with the MAC-10. There's an AWP available, which he will happily pick up. And Snappy in no position to stop this round from falling in the way of G2. Lovely work there from G2. There was no need to force the pace, right? They get a kill towards mid. It looked like they were just going to be going for the fast B hit. And if they'd gone for that, Vince, there were three CDs lying in wait. We saw that Hades with the AWP as well. They could have been completely just shut down, but they slow things down. They slow things down to make their way to the A bombs and Monacy plants the bomb. And even though the moment he gets taken down, Nico just swinging out wide from the palace, ensuring the trade takes place. And once the Molotov is deployed, Hades realizing there's no way he can even get on top of the ticket booth. This is the first opening kill. Hunter finds that kill, and they just slow things down. But man, Monacy, just the awareness of knowing where a player could potentially be towards the A ramp. And now he's going to be gifted an AWP picked up by Alexi B for his efforts. And there you have it. 5-1 to one for G2. What a start for them. For Enz, though, at least have that saved off to work with, with saved rifles to work with. They still have a decent buy. And Sphinx looking to duel with Monacy down towards mid. But G2, this time around, their affections lies with the A-bomb site. Smoke's now being deployed onto the site. Enz cordoning off connector for now. Do they pull the trigger, though? G2 on this engagement for Mass in the hands of Madden. Snappy still very cognizant of the fact that this could be a wraparound from underpass, but that will not be the case as we are afforded the luxury of knowing that intel. Nico trying to tap the head of Snappy, takes a bit of damage, but still alive. And Hades on the jump spots at least one of Tetris. Can now flip up. One for one trade though, especially as it's the AWP that's gone down will favor G2. And it just got that little bit sweeter as they picked up a second, but Snappy keeps this sight just about under control. Nico though pulls out the sledgehammer and knocks down the wall. And Almonese missing out on his chance is at least able to relay that information to his teammates. The connector has been pushed into from one of the remaining two CTs. Diha looking to try and get himself back into this round. Big kill onto Nico. Alexi now stuck on Tetris, needs some support, needs it yesterday. Flash hits both of them though. 25 seconds. That engagement ends in a stalemate, but Diha comes back up. Now spins the what? one down. Modesty with a beautiful flick. And with 15 seconds, needs to find the next shot. Madden shows his hand, but not for long enough for Monacy to strike twice. Switching to the AK gives him that run and gun potential. Tickles the ball, oh, Madden out to the open, and the young gun strikes again. Could just carnage. That first shot from Monacy, what was that flick? Oh my lord, he definitely made up for it. He had a bit of a miss to a whiff towards mid. First he gets the opening on his Sphinx towards mid, and then, of course, 
that op shot, that flick was just absolute filth. He spots a pixel. It's so fast, Vince. The slow mo can't even catch it. Switches over to the AK 47. And that's a tale of redemption in just one round. That flicked. That missed flick, rather, towards mid on the player on top of the uh, on top of Cat. That could have been the round there for Ents, but he definitely recovers in the end. A 1v2. And Monacy, he continues to deliver. 6-1 for G2. Ents, they, they, they had that round, but what do you do? <laughs> what do you do when this kid's hitting shots like that? I think sometimes you just got to tip your hat to him and say, fair play. But Ents did make some errors on their engagements there in those fights. They weren't quite on the same page. Take nothing away from Monacy, that was beautiful. But let's be honest, this NCT side has left a lot to be desired so far. Oh, absolutely. And G2, though, this, this is just a great T side. We can see the aggression now from Enzo. They're looking to take this fight, but the flashes are so good. Alexi B just pushing into a short. Minute and 40 seconds already in that ladder room. I'm not sure if the CTs heard this. And I don't think they have any idea. Perhaps they do, D Hub. Aware, cognizant of the fact that someone could have just been boosted up inside of the smoke. But this is just a fast pace being set here by G2. They have an agent, an agent amongst the defense, and they are unaware. They have no clue, Vince. So much time left as well. The Ents make the right reads. This is where they'll be relying on Snappy's giant CS brain. Try and come up with the winning formula. They've been backs against the wall ever since they won Ancient. It's been one way traffic with G2 and Monacy in the driver's seat as it was on Dust 2. And G2, the Kong getting back together and looking at the position. They were just waiting for Ents to try and regain some map control. That's what Ents like to do, though. When they have no information, they will be pushing the extremities of the map, looking to find something. Alexi B, he could find a free kill here. The Snappy will be spotted. Nico in the meantime finding d -Hut. The jig is finally up. They know exactly where Lexi B is, but as they head in towards the B bomb side, and who's lying in wait? It is Sphinx, but he's been punched in the face by the AK-47 bullets, and that should be the call for the save here, Vince. Unless Nappy can find something ludicrous through the smoke, this round's done. It's a 5v3, and even though Alexi B and Nico have been damaged quite substantially, bomb planted 5v3 in the B bomb site, you go for the save. You hold on to your guns. It's also unconfirmed damage as well. The bolt that have been through smokes. Madden will hold on to his life. Not just that, though. There is the opportunity of the rifle. It's on the other side. There we go. He's found it now. So the MP9 turns into an AK-47. Significant upgrade. The thing is here, though, Blair, we're getting excited about them saving weapons. It doesn't change the fact it's going to be 7-1 on their CT side against them. Saving weapons at this stage is no longer good enough. You've got to start doing something with these guns. They've got to start doing doing what G2 did on the on the first half of Ancient, right? Because I do believe 6-1 or 7-1 for Ents on their T side until G2 with a resurgence making things competitive. But yeah, so far Ents have been just picked apart by G2. This defense has been dissected. And you can see the variety coming up from G2 as well. The previous round, that was fantastic. Alexi B just kind of reminded me of uh, of, uh, of old during the, the glory days of, uh, of Luminosity when they're winning mages. How fast he seems to be up towards Cat. And everything clicking like this for G2. Bit of a fail jump there, but uh, it's all good for Diha. He's still going to stick around. Flashbang. Keep him bay for the time being. But for how long he's going to stick around is a question. G2, they've been kind of coy when it comes to battle match with mid. They a lot of utility, a lot of flashbangs, and they probably usually like keep Monacy or maybe Hunter towards the top of mid, but they haven't really been contesting mid a lot. They haven't given Ents the opportunity to do that with them as Monacy. Just a whisker away from finding Diha's head. And now they know where the AWP is perched towards. Look at how Ents have four members looking to duke it out towards mid. We have one towards Khan. Actually, almost two players towards Khan. We have one inside of jungle. And of course, a player that is Sphinx and short and Monacy with a rare miss shot. And he will be found. Diha has the one more look in his favor. Hunter. Off spray. Not able to capitalize on Hades, who was lurking around the window. 
And now Alexi B making moves down middle. Now there's 40 seconds to play with. G2 have been very slow in this round. And to be fair to Ents, they've done a good job of stalling this one off with utility and position. Molly tossed in one additionally from the CT side. Time is of essence. They have got to move through here, punch through, and try and brute force their way out of connector. They don't have control over Catwalk either. They've thrown a bot off down, but that's not going to affect Sphinx. It's a massacre. They walk into the killing fields, and they have been put down with vengeance, with venom from Ents. Maybe a bit of frustration showing there with how quickly they capitalized. And it's good to see that even though they're 2-7 behind, Spinks, he can still have a laugh about things. He's uh, uh, still calm. It's still very early days, man. It's still very early days. You cannot count Ents out. Like, Mirage is a map where, you know, apart from the Nuke range, it's a map that they used to go for as a, as their first pick at times. They, they're supremely comfortable on it, especially the T-sides from Ents. I genuinely used to enjoy watching it. So... If I'm Ents, you know, just bring it back, have a few rounds here on the CD side, have, leave enough of a buffer, and then, of course, try and mount this uh, comeback, or rather try to close it out in the second half. So, still a lot of rounds remaining to be played. And that was basically G2, just, you know, kind of getting channeled through, like you point out, the uh, the connector area, and that, that there was no way they were winning that. There was like a trifecta of doom just around them, got completely shut down. I'd like to see them go back to uh, what they were doing earlier on, right? Like just mixing things up, a little bit of mid early mid control, but then pivoting back quickly either towards B or A. And I think they've been finding a lot of success there, primarily towards B. There's D Hub. It's a great flashbang. He's going to be forced on back down, but Alexi B leading the charge. I don't think he's been seen. Maybe he has much. Sure, yeah, he has, and an eight is gonna just be lobbed straight into his groin. Down to 26 HP, but he will continue to push on ahead, finding his way into connector. This is a much more faster play coming up from G2 as they go for this A pincer. Two pronged attack. Looking to dissect and evict, annul the marriage of Ents on this A side. But Alexi B is already worse for wear. He'll be limping towards the side. Smoke still are in position. We'll start to dwindle and deplete. Monacy, other side of the smoke. Oh, still takes the head of Madden and makes it his own. Carves a path through onto the site with Nico. Diha, some heroics. Makes Nico fade to black and now gives his team the advantage. Nine HP left for Monacy with 50 seconds. He's now last man standing. On the ace. He's pulled off a 1v2. Can he go one better? He's going to get flanked though. If he's not careful, Snappy is making moves round the back. Still has to contend with Sphinx. And although he's on 9 HP, having the AWP gives him more room for error. But the every second he spends waiting for a peek from CT is another second that Snappy is closing in on him. The chances now are very slim. He can pick this up and Snappy capitalizes, makes the most of the situation. Ents aren't done just yet. This is all Diha, Vince. This is all Diha. The moment Monster gets a kill into Madden, simultaneously he finds a second kill. Nico gets sniped down and it's all in Monacy. And yeah, once again, valiant attempt from him. But once Snappy came in with that flank and considering how low Monacy was, that was pretty much a rounder. And even Snappy, he didn't push uh, pushed towards ramp early on. He waited in case Monty just legs it back towards the B bomb site. And once he knew there was not enough time for Monty to make his way back towards B, he slowly inched ahead. Sphinx being the contingency for his side. And finally, Ents have managed to break the bank of G2. We're down to just the pistols. Honestly, what is Zeus? T side. Garage. I'll be more impressed uh, than, than any of his off flicks if he's able to get a kill <laughs> with, the, with the Zeus here. I'd be Ooh. supremely impressed. $300 well spent as Alexi and Nico will be feeling worse for wear. As they push in, Jax had chances, makes the most of it. Deagle in play, but Deha, Mr. Dependable, Mr. Consistent. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Headshot. Ow, Manasi gets wrecked. And although it's against the Nico, you can't argue with that aim. The rest of the pieces should now fall into place. Nice jump across, man. D has putting on a clinic. Give that man all the frags. Give him the ace. He's earned it. Even though it's an eco ace, that was just so such impressive mechanical ability from D. We started just mentioning as well, like you know, D many of them consider 
to be the most mechanically gifted player in the sense lineup where you have players like Sphinx, like Hades, and even Madden, <laughs> which is insane. But he's showing why he can do it. <laughs> with plays like that, can you argue with it? Considering the previous round where he gets a 4K, winning, netting them that round, mm, yeah. I guess, you know what? Get, get him, give, give him the ace. He deserves it. He's been a beast thus far. 16 and 9 in 11 rounds. This, this is despite the fact they're trailing 4 to 7, mind you. Yeah, coming into this map, Sphinx was by far and away the best performing player with 48 kills in the previous two maps. But now d is showing us what he can do. Sphinx, the man, has the secondary up, puts it to use. Nico, the throne from the palace room, and Monacy will at least get one. But that doesn't feel like it's going to be good enough. Alexi joins him in middle. Plenty of time left here, Blair, but... Although two players are low, when you're still up against two orps and crossfires, and you have a distinct lack of smokes across these two players, it's looking pretty grim. Especially as Alexi B has now been picked off from Sphinx. He will go down to the hands of Munasi, but that won't be good enough to yield the round. We asked and they answered. We, we, we were questioning and so when they're going to wake up, when are they going to start to show what they can do here on their... Uh, on the CD side here, but finally, not just a streak of rounds, not, not only did it break the economy of G2, they're able to survive those uh, those, those pistols as well, but every time G2 is getting their, their, their rifles in hand, they're shutting them down, they're slapping them down. Diha especially is starting to become more and more like a like an Eldritch god of old as Monacy will be found with Madden. Just the pistols this time around, as G2, they're grouping up for to try the luck on his B-bombs. That's something which they have... Uh, kind of forgotten feels like. They're finding a lot of success in the B-bomb set early on. Now, they're going to be going back to the tried and tested. Nade lies in wait. The moment Sphinx spots someone, he takes a shot. The nade's going to follow up. It's not. Yeah. He's slowly falling away now. Mm, that tactical nuke may be late. Maybe not required. Maybe Sphinx was the nuke all along. There's the grenade. Minimal damage as G2 are anticipating that. But it also is two-pronged. Not only does it allow them to do a lot of damage if they push, but if they stay and they stall and they stagnate, it allows more players to get up close. Clean. And it's just shooting fish in a barrel at that stage. Ents have gone from being completely wrecked this half to now being on fire. Five rounds in a row and only one behind G2. It's, it's just almost a replica of what G2 did in that first half of Ancient, right? It was looking like G2 was just going to get smothered and they're able to somehow come alive. And the same here from uh, from Enz, led by Diha, just starting to just take no name, just taking bodies. And now G2 going to go for the fast play to what's been caught out in the open as Hades, blinded for days. Jax will find him. A follow-up nade. Now, they are not aware of the fact that Diha is still inside of Underpass, but they need to be cognizant of that. The problem right now for the side of G2 is there's no one towards, no one in the apartments, no one sneaking in from behind. And Diha, he can easily find a couple here. There's one. Grenade out. May very well fall. Should fall. Did a lot more damage than anticipated. But Madden, showing his patience, showing his resolve, not to peek out aggressively, is going to fall on his sword. And that may not be a good enough trade for Ents. They still find themselves a player behind. G2 taking no prisoners in this round. And now Snappy and Sphinx, when separate areas of the map have to somehow conjoin together. Flick from Monacy goes awry, missing the mark. And now Snappy could feasibly get this done. Alexi has control over the bomb. How does he cross? And, and he can't move right now. This is so awkward for G2. And they could get flanked in. They're getting pincered. Snappy is here, and Nico gets bested by Snappy. Nico is even watching the angle. And the veteran still took his head. The executioner of Ents has prevailed once again. He may go down to Alexi, IGL and IGL crime, but now Alexi can make a beeline for the B site. And that will be his final destination. Sphinx with the AWP. Can't stop the plant, bare minimum. Alexi planting safe. Sphinx daren't push through that window just yet. And with a flash up and over, hasn't quite affected Spinks, still moving in. Is it confirmed damage? Does he whip out the sidearm here? Grenade won't be finishing off Alexi, designated towards the van. And now that time on the bomb, ticking away, and Alexi clutches. G2 take it down. Snappy, I, he did almost everything to perfection, then he jumps up. He jumps up and it gives Alexi's entire body, leaves his entire body exposed for Alexi to 
get the kill, and then immediate quick thinking from Alexi B. He'll legs to the B bomb side. Patiently played there by the Finn. Oh, that could have gone anyway. He just jumps up on top, and oh, that's gonna be crushing for Snappy because he destroyed Nico there earlier, even though when Nico was waiting for him. A very back and forth affair coming out as Monacy takes just a bit of a warning shot there. Diha is pushed up very, very deep. 19 and 10 for the pole, the Terminator in the server right now. It's going to be B hit coming in, and once more, Snappy. He'll have him out to the call of duty. Oh, the Duke has landed this time, all right. And Sphinx is there to clean up the rest. Two kills go his way. Keep in mind, at one point, this was 1 to 7, stacked against Ents, and they finish in fine form. 7 8 the score. Right back in this. Five in a row there for Enz, and what was it? was looking grim. It was looking grim. Seven to one, the scoreline initially for a G2 starting on the attacking side. But yeah, great resurgence. Ably, I mean, it all started off with the catalyst that is Diha, right? Just popping off and then kind of enabling everyone else in his team to really step up as well, step up to the plate. Sphinx starting to wake up as well. Hades, though, still very quiet, Vince. That's a big question mark for me throughout this yep. entire series. Mm -hmm. You look at Snappy, he's had his moments, Madden has had his moments, Spinks has been incredible, D has 21 and 10, and Hades, I think it's like 23 kills or something in three maps. It's, it's looking grim. He's had slow starts in each of those maps as well. He started to pick up the pace a little bit when the roles reversed on Ancient. He only had seven kills on Dust2. As a primary AWPer, that is grim. And now the grenades are coming in to be apps. Damage inflicted. Hunt finishes off. But there is Diha. 20 second kill to his name. Nico holds the line on the ballot bench, trying to tap those heads and tap he will. Three kills back to back. He's given G2 every chance to win this round. And Snappy instantly gooshes Monacy. He can't afford to peek again. Flash does nothing at all. And Snappy has time to burn. That countdown to extinction will not be coming any time soon for Snappy, unless bullets land to heads. He's gooshed both players collectively. 18 HP between G2 and Snappy. Is he really about to pull off another hero play in this best of three series? A chance at Legends beckons for the IGL. 31 years of age and is fragging his mind out at this point, but he's made a lot of noise. There's the first frag in this exchange and he has time. It's not just about the kills, it's keeping a cool head in the process. He knows B site is where the last CT resides, so he's headed to A for greener pastures. The bomb gets planted and now everything turns in Snappy's favor. Monacy has got to land an outrageous flick headshot if he wants to clutch this round now. He's got a smoke. He does have a kit. He can just go ahead, cross his fingers, cross his toes, hope for the best, full on defuse, and there's Snappy. Another clutch for the day. Cold as ice is Snappy. Nico did everything humanly, inhumanly possible to make that, you know, just almost unwinnable for Snappy. Look at these shots. What the hell are these shots from Nico? Just completely dismantling Diha, Hades, and Sphinx, and then and then Snappy, as you pointed out, the veteran, the one you don't look to when it comes to just pure firepower for his team. He delivers a huge one v two, calm, composed. He knew he had one thing going for him, Vince, and that was time, and he used it to perfection. Cheeky boost won't work it in itself, but Hunter relocates and gets the better of two oh. players. That's the thing with G2. Hunter may have had a bit of a slow game, but you know he always has this up his sleeve. At a moment's notice, he can just lay that down on the table. And now G2, hold off the back of a very disappointing loss. They're in with a shot at winning this round, and keep in mind, they that's have a, one rifle and only pistols. That's a Hero A1 a they bought, the Hero yeah. M4A1 they were able to purchase. And that was Nico who bought it for Hunter giving it to his cousin and trusting him with the weapon and boy, he has delivered. It's not just that, like, they get a two kills and no one's died yet. And those, don't forget the Deagles. Don't forget the Deagles in the hand of G2 as Nico, woo, flirting with danger, takes a couple of shots, he's looking for more. And the rest of his teammates haven't really budged on the A side. They've drawn away some fire. Monacy now from the side, Nico misses his chance. 
Well, that proved to be costly. Monacy, what? Oh, through Tetris. Has undone Sphinx, and Diha may be able to get this plant down, but it's a one on three, and they were waiting. Sharks circling their prey, and finally they dive in. I need to see the shot. Oh, come on. Give, give him the fist bump. Give him the fist bump. There we go. I want to see the shot from Monacy again. That was the, uh, the edge of the boxes, if I'm not mistaken, and... Uh, my word, what a round. Firstly, Hunter. It's two great kills. Madden out in the open. It was pretty much untradeable. And then Monacy. Oh, look at that. It's just, that just... Okay. All right. All right, Monacy. He's not just an AWP. He's a gamer. He's a gamer. He's a real gamer. Uh, and right now, G2 are gaming. Ents off the back of, a, of an incredibly well-played clutch from Snappy and G2. They immediately snatch it back. AK, Galil, retrieved from the previous round from the corpses of Ents, and they of course have the A1 upgrades as well. Force by is going to be coming in for Ents, however, pistols abound, smokes will be deployed, and look at where Nico is. Enough smokes to blot out the sun, but Nico comes through there. He tries to smoke onto that Molotov, and Jack's missing out on his chance. Nico should have done enough. Madden had other ideas. Tech 9 runs straight into the site and pillages two heads. And now the Vikings of Ents are looking to put their flag down. And Diha, spilling blood left and right with the MAC-10, has finally gone to Valhalla. Grenade is good for damage, but not good for the frag. And Madden can survive on 38. Slight gap in the smoke. And Alexi is going to be pushing through there, missing out on the chance. Nico got the first two picks there, Blair. And they still lost the round. What Please explain that to me. D D Diha, Diha, just standing on top of stairs with that <laughs> Mac 10, and you can see G2 looking a little shell shocked. The, the force by wars. He's forced by Wars and Madden though. This second shot is just nasty with Jax. He needed to get one. This is the play over here. Just moving around with the MAC-10. I mean, because of the mobility afforded to it by the SMG, just able to find two. And in the end, despite the heroics, the final player, the 1v2, a little bit too much. And ends. they bring it back. They rest it back for G2. But once again, once again, the hero M4A1. But this time, it's in the hands of the Frenchman. Jax is going to be wielding it, but they've opted to go for a bit of a stack towards B. Just one lone defender towards A, that's going to be Nico, and now slowly creeping back towards Connected to try and help his teammate out. That is Jax with the A1. They're all grouping up here at mid, and that is a timing that somehow Ents have been able to find. A bomb site is empty, and even though Jax will find Snappy, this bomb site is theirs for the taking, and Ents will get the bomb down, but Madden falls, and suddenly, even though they have the weaponry advantage, it's a 4v3 for G2. The only silver lining is that Snappy's weapon was the MAC-10, so they don't just get a free rifle out of that. A rifle did drop jungle, but they have to subside through smoke to get there first. That's the only thing that might be going in their way, but they are hemorrhaging kills. Hunter and Jax both just jump in, frag out, and Diha, the man on 26 kills, 10 more than anyone else on the server has a huge task ahead of him. The bomb's not even planted directly for him, and Monacy will punish with the AK. Out of nowhere, G2 have slapped Ents across the face. They've done it again. Again, literally span of three rounds. Whoo, they got a little close. They got a little close, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> the M4, man, the, 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 these hero M4s earlier was Hunter finds two kills, getting boosted up towards underpass, and now Jax finding a couple. Madden jumping across before the smoke blooms, and once his head gets plucked off, G2 just group up together. They don't really waste much time, not giving enough space and time for ends to get themselves into more comfortable post plan positions. And in the end, as you said, I mean, look, Diha has been incredible, but I mean, the guy is human at the end of the day, right? You're expecting him to get four kills in a 1v4 with the bomb not even getting planted for him. And G2, the force by Wars now. The question here is for Ents, did it go for it again? Did it go for yet another force by, or did it let this one slide and save so they at least will have a full-fledged uh, arsenal at their disposal come the next round? That's a question right now as, uh, man, Jax, dude. Three that, huge kills with an A1. That second shot on Connector was just pixel perfect. He had to hit the head and he did mid-air. Unbelievable. The answer has been given, Blair. You better believe they're force buying again. We go again. Three rifles, two pistols alongside it. Does afford them a little bit more in terms of utility on the belt. 
They got smokes to burn. They got mollies. They got flashes. They also have ramp control. There's a smoke down there at the moment, but four players congregating outside of the ramp, leaving Sphinx alone in Palace. And now here comes the full on execute. Nico dealing with the main threat of Sphinx from Palace, goes in for more before the smokes have a chance to fully plume. Two for two trade. Nico is exceptionally low, however, and now Dihar is taking significant damage as well. Flashes out from the CT. May allow them safe passage onto the bomb, but now Hades up on the boxes, nullifies Hunter, passes a bullet through his head, tries to scamper off into ramp, is successful, but Snappy's been caught at range. Alexi's spray lets him down, but he's able to transfer to the second player of Hades, and Snappy's position is compromised. They knew he was in that corner. The HP bar on all three players is below 25. Diha on six has to just put two bullets down range on a post plant, and this round will still go the way of Ent, even though it's been looking scrappy, even though it's been looking difficult, but Nico's timing could not be better. And G2 steal away yet another round. One second later of there from Nico and Diha clutches it. He takes out Alexi B. Oh my word, everyone stepping up individually for G2. The, the rounds are winning here. It was Hunter with a 3k, it was Jax with a 3k, now it's Nico. Not just with a 3k, but also a, just a round winning kill at the very end. And the force by was, it's still going to continue. And they're not stopping this. <laughs> they're still going for it. They know they have G2's economy on the brink. They want to break it. They're so very close. And once more, we go again. It's going to be the A bomb site. Jax playing up close and personal. Smoke's going to be deployed. He sees Sphinx going to be dropped that immediately. Smoking of the Molotov as well as Monacy. Block Snappy from the air. Beautiful shot. Clay Pigeon shooting from Monacy, but using live ammo now. And Nico perched up on the bench, bypassing the smoke, getting the rewards. D has the only player that's really struck so far with that MAC-10. But Nico on the prowl has been thwarted by Hades and pushed away. Madden, meanwhile, in window deals with the other component, and that family tree has now been uprooted. Ents looking good to get double digits, but that man is still alive, Monacy. He has been a pain in the side, a talisman of this game. Alexi, who pulled off such a vital clutch just a few moments ago, and is still alive, still kicking into this round. Monesty's trying to be baited out into the open by Ents, but he's not biting just yet, and a well-placed flash forces the tease away. Now Monesty can just get his angles trained on ramp, but Hades plucks him out with the AK-47. Alexi has to go above and beyond once again. This force by war has continued, and it could be just a few moments away from breaking G2 yet again. Alexi's got to make a move here. Time is running so dry, so low. He feels like Tetris has been caught off, but now he's going to find out. Oh! oh my god! The flick to Hades' head. Is there enough time for the fin? He's got there it! There is! He's got it! Unbelievable! Oh my god! What was that? What was the first shot from Alexi B? That flick on the Tetris. The round was done, Vince. He had no idea where he was. Oh my goodness me. The individuals on this G2 side. Oh, I need to pause after that. I need a tackle timeout. Blair, they say that, you know, a picture spells a thousand words. I think that body language tells you everything you need to know about how wrecked Ents must feel. Oh boy. They had it, Vince. They, they had it. That force buy, they, they, they had it. They almost broke it. This is the replay of the last round, as you can see. Monacy was huge, but it's Alexi. First pivoting from Catwalk, nearly denies the bomb plant, and this shot is no. absurd. No. Especially as before that, if you remember, he quickly shoulder peaked Tetris, and then he assumed it was clear. That was pure reaction speed. Jesus. Well, Vince, ends get the bomb down. They don't have to force by anymore. They have, finally have the last bonus to eke out a solid buy. But G2 with a three round lead. I don't care about all these Mirage naysayers, man. The, this map delivers. It is most certainly delivered this time around. That's for sure. This, let's be honest, this entire series has. The first map may have been a bit of a blowout, but there were some crazy moments on that one as well. Now, Hunter. Looking to try and connect 
with a couple kills, but Connector has now been bypassed. Jack's a different angle. Haven't really seen the CTs occupy around this aggressively so far. What? And Jack spins in for two, and now Sphinx can clean up the rest onto Jax. They have dealt with the A contingent though, Ents, but it's Sphinx against the world. Monacy crosshairs trained in the direction of Sphinx, and he doesn't have anything to cross with. There we go. No smokes, no flashes, nothing. And Monacy, he doesn't miss those. And G2, they continue to put in the nails in a potential coffin here for Ents. What a, what a hole from Jax. Everyone is falling apart outside of him. Sure, Hades was low. Sure, Snappy was low, but still incredible control from Jax with an A1. As Ents, they're going to be going for a bit of a I thought it was going to be half by, but no, they're going all in again. Vince, they've just been forced buying non-stop for the past five rounds. Again, the pistols come out. At least it's time to have a Mac-10 and a Galil. A couple of Mac-10s and a Galil in the hands of Madden. And look at Hunter just pushing into his apartments. Find Sphinx and G2. They have come alive. And they can smell it, Vince. They can smell that legend stage. Some more needs to get off and get Dihar a chiropractor after this performance. The man's back must be aching. He's been doing so much lifting. He needs someone to help carry the burden. If Ents are going to have a second wind, someone else has got to step up to the plate. In terms of this round, losing Spink so early on ravages their chances, but they have Madden with a Galil. Additionally, two players up middle, two in the B apps. B site, two defenders only. One of which is Hunter, however. Now the two of them are going to push in. That flash is good, but Alexi's barely affected by it. Which is all for the best because Hunter was completely blinded. Now Smokes and Molly's being exchanged. Out into the open, they'll filter in, but Diha into a hail of bullets. As he's vanquished by Hunter. And although there is a counter frag, it shouldn't be going the way of Ents. 35 seconds and Hades with now an A1S to his side. This will be a huge moment for him to step up. But Monacy will swat him away. Ents will have a buy coming up. But G2 are two rounds away from the legend stage. The amount of clutches won here by G2 has been absolutely insane. And like three clutches won, two by Alexi. <laughs> I'm going to remember that 1v2 over there on the A-bomb side for, for quite a while, Vince. But even the, the number of rounds it comes down to the 2v2s, 3v2s, and somehow they cling on. And, and it's coming down to the individuals. It's coming down to the sheer depth of firepower that this team possesses. And even Alexi B stepping up to the plate. You're looking at his team, you're like, sure, Jackson pop off. You have Nico, Hunter, Monacy, and Alexi B as the individual delivering as well. And for Ents, it seems like they've thrown almost everything they have, including the kitchen sink at G2, and somehow G2, they did not budge. Right now, 14 to 9, G2 two rounds away from locking in that position, Vince. It means so much to this team. It means so much to everyone in the server right now. And for Ents, it's almost like they've hit a hit a wall at the moment. Oh, they, they've hit a wall, all right. And that wall is Alexi B. These last five or so rounds, this man has been omnipresent, immortal, clutch master, fragging when he's required. It's been way more of a team effort over on the G2 side, though. Many players pulling their weight. Mate, I don't even smoke, and I feel like I need a cigarette after this game. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sphinx has been caught by a HE and also a flashbang. See, this is actually the smoke. Those Jax is there, but Jax is too fast. And Nico mops up Snappy, who is thinking of peeking through Palace. Another engage that goes heftily in favor of G2. Alexi, he spots Madden's foot, and before Madden's able to sneak his way into its connector, finding him. And one by one, they start to fall. Just two players remain. Diha, 28 kills. What more can this man do? And Hades, a rough day in office for him today, but it's still not quite done yet. He can redeem himself. He's got the op, his weapon of choice in his hands. Smoke and a flash to work with. The problem is, G2, apart from a few kills, they got towards RAM, towards Palace, towards Connector. They haven't shown anything. And now Alexi B goes poking and prodding. It's like, where the hell are they? They want to find something. Nico finds Diha. Now all in Hades. 1v5 looking unlikely, looking impossible. Alexi B strikes him down. And with that, G2 one round away. They are map and match point, Vince. And Ents have been absolutely slaughtered 
on this second half. They have done almost everything possible, thrown everything at G2, and G2 just don't blink. The, the individuals, the, just the heroics. And that previous round, that was as convincing as it can get from G2. There's no more 2v2s, no more 1v1s. G2 just shutting things down and right now, and showing why Mirage is a map that they should absolutely be feared on. They should indeed. Another stat for you. Only two rounds in this half have gone the way of Ents, one of which was the pistol. And, one of which, and the second one was the force buy. Yes. So they've had chances. The force buy wars, as we coined it, has been thick and fast. And every single turn, every single opportunity, G2 have been in the ascendancy. But can they finish this one off? Are they going to apply the pressure and break Ents once and for all and secure their spot in the legend stage. Well, here we go. Weaponry, not that ideal for Ents. Not even a solitary AK-47, just Galils for everyone apart from Hades on the Deagle. A lot of utility, though, to work with. And this time around, it's not going to be any... Not going to be a fast play. And that's the thing from Ents, right? Like, almost all the runs I've seen from them on their on their four spies, it's just been this fast plays. Just this commit, full commitment, executes on towards A bomb site or you're rushing in towards B. They don't really slow it down. And when they slow it down, we saw what happened in the previous round, where it just got completely just picked apart one after the other. No trades taking place. And once more, they're setting things up. But this feels like a ruse, Vince. Just a couple of players. You can see the bomb on the back of Madden slowly peeling towards B. They're grouping up here, and Monacy, he lies in wait. We haven't really seen any fakes from Ents so far. This is one of the first times, but Monacy nailing the first player has kind of given this a one away, especially seeing two. This feels like it may be a done deal. They still have one more player coming out, but it's Hades and now Madden, last man alive. The only thing working in the man's favor is that he has the bomb, but he has no more life. 